You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Forget football games and pumpkin patches. This episode of Barn Stories celebrates the very best way to enjoy a gorgeous autumn afternoon. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prinz, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We've searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. I'm a trail rider, not just an occasional one, but exclusively. I used to go to shows and clinics, but not anymore. People ask me why I no longer have any interest in competition and serious training, and the essay in this episode really illustrates my answer. There's no ribbon, award, or training milestone that can compare to the feeling of riding a horse through a quiet patch of woods and looking straight up at the treetops, or galloping through an open field under a perfect blue sky. Those moments are my motivation for riding and the motivation of many of you, I suspect. This essay celebrates such moments in a particular part of the world, the Piedmont country of Virginia and North Carolina during a particular time of year. But it describes an experience that transcends time and place. Whether it's a bright winter afternoon in New England or a sultry summer morning in Texas, the world always looks a bit more beautiful from the back of a horse. So let's listen to Simple Pleasures, written by Joanne Groves and read by Taylor Autumn. The wind picks up just as we start to clip my mare, furring my husband's tractor cap with short, white hairs. We guess Belle is a Percheron paint cross, just as we guess her age to be 19. And every fall, her French jeans prepare for winter in the Pyrenees and grow her a polar bear coat. The cold months here and the North Carolina foothills of the Blue Ridge shouldn't be quite as wearisome as winters that Belle's ancestors encountered. But after the wild, thunder-booming summer, who knows? Two winters ago, we had so much snow that I longed to hitch her to a sleigh with my grandparents' bronze bells jingling from her harness. Now, standing at Belle's mammoth head, I hold her purple lead rope in one hand and stroke her forehead with the other, lifting the muddy forelock to find new, cottony hair underneath. Meanwhile, my husband, with shimbone-sized cow clippers, shaves the top of her legs, her belly, her sides, around her tail, and her neck down to a stubbly, white teddy bear fuzz. The remaining hair is inches thick, and seen from behind, she appears to wear a crooked white blanket because her flanks have been clipped a bit unevenly. This episode of Barn Stories is brought to you by El Encanto Resort in Costa Rica. Our cherished horses are more than a mere activity on a list. We are a bustling horse ranch with more than 50 of the finest Costa Rican bred horses and the heart of our sister property, the El Lugar Resort in Costa Rica. We create an adventure for you and your unique talent, abilities, and desires. What would make this the most beautiful experience of your life? We'd love to know. Learn more at www.elencanto.cr. Wearing sweatshirts for the first time this fall, we feed Red Delicious and Gala Apple Peels to Belle and my husband's quarter horse gelding. Then we tack up both horses and ride slowly past the rust-colored clods that come spring will become one of our vegetable gardens. We head down our gravel drive and the paved road beyond to the dairy barns and the hay, soybean, and cornfields. Asters wink their lavender-lashed yellow eyes along the drive. Ten-foot sunflowers stand like exhausted Degas ballerinas, petal-bright goldfinches cheeping in and out among the drooping heads, eating from our store of next year's seeds. 
My husband doesn't want to canter through the ripe soybeans to the top of the hill. So we walk around, each of our horses periodically dipping for a muzzle full of green. We know this is bad manners, but we're in no hurry. We're just wandering until it's time to go home and eat the cinnamon-spiced fried apples that once inhabited those peels. I haven't ridden in almost a month, so walking Belle downhill feels like sitting on an unbalanced washing machine. She has to remember anew how to pick up her plate-sized feet and stumbles a few times on hillocks of fescue and soft dirt scooped out by skunks looking for grubs and sand dumped creekside by winter floods. We walk on grass between crops and hedgerows of goldenrod and pink smartweed. Beyond are poplar trees with leaves a mix of green, bright yellow, and brown. The Blue Ridge Mountains, actually the Virginia border at Fancy Gap, where we can see it, are a dark navy in the sherried light of late afternoon, early fall. With no overtime for my husband, no temp work for me, and one daughter still in college, our world at first glance would appear to have shrunk. No eating out, no travel, no new clothes, paying bills late, and checking online each morning to make sure our bank account isn't in the red. But our world is never small out here. Other people have to pay for the privileges we enjoy of admiring these spectacular views, smelling the leaves, and hunting deer and turkey. Usually we see some deer among the green, clacking corn waiting for the silage cutter. But today, only a single quail rockets up under my horse's indifferent nose. She ignores as well the first spotted Holstein we've ever seen in the new pasture, between the corn and the trees. Intent on returning home to stand in the run-in shed and eat hay, Belle begins to power walk. Turning back, we see black clouds piling up over the barn. It'll rain tonight, further loosening the summer-hardened soil for transplanting perennials tomorrow. Driving past the nearby hunting preserve this morning on our way home from church, we saw a handful of SUVs, but haven't heard a single shot while out on the trail. The wind that makes our horses so jumpy because they can't tell where smells are coming from muddles sounds as well. Now we hear the hum of milking machinery and barks of an overweight beagle at the barn and a slow-witted feist at our house. Two eastern meadow larks wheel from the power lines overhead, sounding like the break of spring. A silver pickup speeds past, the young, bearded driver bending over the wheel to stare at the bridle and black-cupped blinders on my horse. Back at the shed, I crank myself to the ground, stiff from only two hacks in four weeks. Belle leans down to gobble the dry Bermuda grass at her feet. Anything, evidently, is better than the nothing she gets in her pasture. Her girth was a notch tighter today but there isn't a shadow of a rib or hip bone anywhere under her winter coat. She and I are what are known as easy keepers. We're also both gray, grumpy, and gimpy. We're a good match, she tells me with her head lowered. She finishes her apple peels and gets a handful of senior feed. My husband and I go in to enjoy our apples, plus biscuits, and an omelet studded with banana peppers, tomatoes, zucchini, and potatoes that we grew. The sun sets in a fiery, always astonishing blaze over the Blue Ridge. Nighttime, closed windows, and winter on its way. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening.
The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.